MQA still manages to keep in the focus of a large number of audio files. But judging by the discussions in forums, impatience is just around the corner. There have been developments though, lots of them. Let's start with the sources. On the high-end Munich show it was already announced that Warner Music Group signed a long-term licensing deal and currently the MQA team is encoding thousands of high-res albums. More than 250 MQA albums from audiophile labels such as ECM, RME Premium Recordings, Sono Luminous, Unamus and 2L are already encoded. These albums are available on music download stores across Europe, Japan and the US, including 2L, 7 Digital, e Onkyo Music, Cryptom, HQM, Onkyo Music and HiResAudio.de. And Tidal sticks to their promise to start streaming MQA as soon as all of the catalogue is converted. Some say that will be at the end of the year, others say they won't manage before the beginning of 2017. There have been comments on MQA by manufacturers of DA converters, not all of them being fair to say the least. Perhaps the nastiest one came from Benchmark's VP of and Director of Engineering John Xiao that used the headline, Is MQA dead on arrival? The first line of the text is, the truth is that we may add MQA to the list of audio formats that have come and gone. This is not only incorrect. It is Trump-like mean. I don't know if MQA will survive or not, but saying that the truth is followed by a may is how populists do their business. The technical story that follows is interesting, but for me the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Indeed, I prove a lot. And Xiao will be hard pressed to find a well respected audio journalist supporting his claim that MQA degrades the sound. Some manufacturers use arguments I can understand, like they need to hand over all technical details, including for instance the filtering code to MQA so a fingerprint can be made of the DA conversion. That's a bit like asking Coca Cola for their recipe. It doesn't matter for those manufacturers that use off the shelf DAC chips for they didn't develop the code themselves. It does matter for manufacturers like Cord, PS Audio and the like since their code was developed over a long time and, to be honest, take away a significant portion of the artifacts of the reconstruction filter. Thus at least a part of the problem MQA solves, doesn't need solving here. By the way, Benchmark uses off the shelf ESS Sabre 9018S DACs in their DAC 2. Yet another comment made by manufacturers is plain stupid. They want FLAC to survive since it had always been free of rights where MQA is not. Have they forgotten they love to pay licensing fees for the CD player, the DVD audio player and the SA CD player? And are they not interested in improving audio quality? Let's leave it at that. Developing a DA converter that supports MQA takes as much time as developing a DA converter plus the time it takes MQA to produce the fingerprint of a DAC to incorporate in the MQA decoder. So it's not strange it took some time before MQA hardware came to market. Of course Meridian was the first to market with their Explorer 2, followed by MyTech now having two models, the Meridian 800 series update and the Meridian Ultra DAC. Brinkman has announced their Nyquist DAC that does MQA decoding. Bluesound added MQA to all their players through a free software update. They even issued a soundbar that's MQA compatible. At the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest a number of MQA products were introduced. MSB showed their select DAC while Orenda demonstrated their A10 music server, Belcanto introduced the ACI 600 integrated amplifier that later will be available with MQA and Carry Audio showed the DMS 500 streamer. 
MQA was rewarded three times recently. The British Engineering Excellence Award, the Rocky Mountain International Hi-Fi Press Lifetime Achievement Award for Bob Stewart and the Rocky Mountain International Hi-Fi Press Award for Innovation was rewarded to MQA. Up till now it was quite difficult to find albums in high-res and MQA that came from the same master. Luckily Eddie Nunning sent me a mail in which he made clear that his album Songs for Quiet Nights now was available from highresaudio.de in both 24-bit 88.2 kHz PCM and the same files in MQA. They were mastered by Spencer Trislow of MQA and gave a good impression of what MQA can do. Spencer also transferred the 96 Buena Vista Social Club to MQA. Both recordings gave a direct comparison I have been waiting for for some time. I have more tracks in high res and MQA but I couldn't tell whether they stem from the same source. Now I have these tracks, I only have the Blue Sound node and the Meridian Explorer 2 to listen to MQA. But that gave sufficient clues to describe what MQA does. The first to notice is that there is hardly any change in timbre, but it takes away some muddiness in the mid lows and that could be interpreted as less warm by the casual listener. The mids and highs sound more open and clear and have a freshness you seldom hear from digital equipment in this price range. It's what I have guessed from for instance the Köln concert by Keith Jarrett that I own in both 96 kHz PCM and 96 kHz MQA. Of course, it all depends on the DAC used, but if two very affordable devices show this difference, what will it do to equipment of even higher quality? I already reviewed the MyTech Brooklyn DAC and was rather enthusiastic. And I can't wait to hear other equipment. I have been fighting for 10 years against technocrats that explained me that digital is ones and zeros so nothing could, could go wrong despite of what I claim to hear. Until they were overruled by the truth about jitter. Then I have said for more than 10 years that higher sampling rates make sense for they simply sound better. And again I was put away as an idiot by technocrats for what I hear. See my video The Truth About Nyquist and Why 192 kHz does make sense. They are overruled by the work of many researchers that simply state that it is impossible to band limit a signal without artifacts appearing in that band limited signal. And now again with MQA people tell me what I hear can't be true. And where 30 years ago I became rather uncertain when that happened. I am older, wiser and bolder now. I know what I hear and people that use calculators to find out what they hear will never listen. That's ok, luckily there are people like Stuart and Craven that bring audio to a new level or at least attempt to. With me on their tail. So subscribe to this channel, follow me on Facebook, Twitter or Google Plus and you can also post questions but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my questions video to find out why. You'll find more information below this video. If you like this video, please consider supporting this channel through Patreon and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.